everybody. Dave Lindbergh in Hong Kong with another episode of THC Podcast. Thanks for checking us out today. Uh, we have a company called Lyceum, and they're creating a database for companies that are building uh, uh, audio hardware products, but perhaps uh, anything processing sound. And so they're going to have a, a database that can uh, capture a lot of the test and development uh, on on the development of those hardware products. So we're going to find out exactly what they're doing in a moment. But without delay, let's give uh, some credit to Alti, our sponsor. And so Alti is an association um, called the Audio and Loudspeaker Technologies International. They used to be the American Loudspeaker Manufacturing Association, but now they've gone global. And so their mission is to promote and advance the interests of the loudspeaker and related audio tech industry. So they're really kind of some cool guys behind uh, networking for audio product development. So that's kind of what we're into here. So uh, we encourage you to check out Alti. So without delay, let's say hello. So we've got uh, Simon in uh, Japan. Good morning, Hi. Simon. Morning. Yes. And uh, Joshua Levy, uh, co-founder and in charge of development at Lyceum. How are you doing this afternoon, Joshua? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, David. Great. And Chris Martellotti, he's a co-founder as well, and he's kind of the product manager, taking care of customers and and finding out what the market needs and and giving feedback and developing on that tangent. So, uh, hey, Chris, how you doing? Good. Good to be here. All right. So, yeah, like uh, I try to nut things down for people to get them interested to stay tuned to the podcast. So, did I good do I did I do a good job of capturing what you guys are up to, and maybe let's expand on it. I think so. Yeah. And uh, hopefully we can, if anyone else has any more questions, uh, hopefully we can clarify with, you know, the presentation we're about to give. Okay. So we jump right into the presentation then. All right. Great. Well, welcome to the uh, Lyceum, our presentation of the Lyceum. First of all, thank you, Dave, for giving us uh, the platform and uh, access to your audience to share what we've been building over the past few years. Uh, we're very excited uh, because we think that the Lyceum is, uh, can be a game changing software for audio product development. Um, we developed the Lyceum as a browser based living database platform with a beautiful user interface and a fast serverless framework. The benefits of the development choices. Uh, the benefits of these development choices will provide audio engineers with a fast and easy and scalable solution to integrate into their R&D and manufacturing processes. So kind of picture this, that you're a newly hired engineer at a large consumer electronics development team, mm -hmm. and you're tasked with baseline performance of a new product in development, but you quickly run into some hurdles, which you know involve experiment reproduction issues, scattered data, and collaboration roadblocks. But for not, the Lyceum is here to transform that that you know that journey. Uh, the Lyceum isn't just a software; it's a force of eff efficiency, and it's a, an online collaborative uh, uh, masterpiece crafted to be an online lab assistant to hardware system engineers. So let's we can bid farewell to manual data management and embrace the the power of automation. Okay, with and the Lyceum, just. I think that uh, to help people out, the, the name of your company, Lyceum, it's based yeah. on this concept of remote learning and remote sharing, isn't it? It's like a Greek word or something for that. Is that where it comes from? Well, the the Lyceum, it actually, uh, it, it's a Greek word, you're right. It was the name of uh, uh, Socrates' uh, old gym name, gymnasium. And uh, Socrates' famous disciples, uh, the two disciples were, were Plato and Aristotle. Mm -hmm. And... Plato himself, he 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 went. He was very well established, and he went on to uh, to establishing the first, uh, I guess, university in known in human history, and they called it the the academy. And uh, uh, the Aristotle is actually t um, learning underneath uh, Plato at that at the academy, but he didn't like the back and forth uh, style of learning that the academy provided it was very just upper class upper echelon if you had enough money you can get into the uh, academy and mm -hmm. it wasn't really like fact based uh experimentation style of learning it was basically just uh going back and forth and theorizing about the reality of the world so uh aristotle has had his own spin on things and it was actually got a lot of steam enough so where plato didn't like it and uh, with his Macedonian descent, uh, was exiled. 
he went to uh, an isle off the coast of Greece, uh, island somewhere in Greece. I forget the exact. I think it was Lesbos, but I couldn't. I could be. I forget. It's irre- irrelevant. But mm-hmm. he basically there he uh, created a, a ton of different studies of science, uh, mainly uh, in biology. So he basically looked, studied the plant life, and created <laughs> biology from it. And um, he really dis- he's really known for grandfathering in the. Uh, what we know today as the scientific method, where you establish a hypothesis and uh, use, you, you know, cr- conduct an experiment and you collate data and you generate a result from that from that data. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, he, he went from he he made a name for himself there. Uh, long story short, made his way back to um, Greece, where he established the Lyceum, which was a open source kind of anyone can come in and go, come, come and go to uh, the lectures where they would conduct, uh, um, you know, classes uh, in this old rundown gymnasium that was like the real place that uh, his, his um, teacher Socrates used to hang out. So that's where the Lyceum comes from. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Sure. No, it's the collaborative and uh, yeah, in and out. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, so basically with the Lyceum, we, we have a lot of ambition and, and a lot of, uh, 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 I guess, features we want to add into it based off of those principles that I was talking about with, you know, the Aristotle and the scientific method. But with, right now with, with the Lyceum, we uh, our, our first goal is to mainly ingest a bunch of data and, and, and uh, make it available to as many people as possible that uh, so they can collaborate on it. Okay. So a little bit about us. Um, first off, the um, myself, Joshua Levy. I have an audio systems. I'm an audio systems engineer with over a decade of experience in in you know consumer electronics industry. I worked mm-hmm. on some projects including the Amazon Alexa, the Facebook Portal, and Oculus Quest Pro. Uh, and I developed the technical uh, features set of the uh, of the actual. Lyceum. Being in the trenches and working with data all the time, I, I'm I'm intimately familiar with the problems that uh, engineers kind of encounter on a day to day basis. Mm-hmm. And then, Chris, yeah, uh, Chris Martellotti and I I met Josh uh, sort of at the end of last year and started working. We sort of hit it off and kind of um, I had some experience working in hardware, um, and then a lot of my background has been in data. Um, and things of that nature and it's kind of saying okay this 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 model makes a lot of sense and uh kind of leading go to market and product really understanding what people want in the marketplace and then how we can provide that and so um most of my work has been very early on uh sort of helping startups sort of get off the ground and and you know two millions in revenue and so uh, we're very early but hearing great things in the market and so excited to kind of be working with josh on uh helping launch this mm-hmm. right yeah Thanks, Chris. So let's dive into the essence of Lyceum. Um, with over three years of development, Lyceum has been shaped by the wisdom and expertise of audio industry owners, technology directors, and as well as individual contributors at, at companies. And their input has guided every step of our product development. And when it comes to audio R&D and manufacturing, Lyceum is the first of its kind. It's uh, been meticulously built from the ground up employee uh, tailor made to support the unique characteristics of audio hardware engineering, all while maintaining the security and the privacy that engineering teams require. <clears throat> Lyceum excels at hardware data ingestion, offering a solution, a software solution crafted specifically for a wide range of hardware engineering data. It is able to seamlessly manage measurement data as well as the limits crafted for that measurement data that validate product performance. Uh, it, it's missing piece that sim- seamlessly integrates into engineer's workflow. Another differentiation of the Lyceum is its ability to handle large-scale data processing all via the web browser. Mm -hmm. Designed to tackle a vast amount of data swiftly, the platform ensures that you'll never be held back by data bottlenecks. With the Lyceum, you'll experience the power of efficiency as it effortlessly processes your data, unlocking the insight at speed, insight, unlocking insights at speeds that leaves traditional approaches in the dust. So let's re- unravel the core of organizational decision making, the very foundation upon which success is built. Mm-hmm. Imagine a pyramid, a structure that represents the flow of data, insights, and actions within an organization. 
At its base, the pyramid holds the key to experimentation, the realm where data acquisition systems like Clipple, Audio Precision, and Soundcheck thrive. <clears throat> Moving up the pyramid, we reach the three crucial steps from, that form the heart of decision-making, data ingestion, visualizations, and collaboration. And guess what? The Lyceum streamlines all three levels. The first step is data, the lifeblood of informed decision-making. Generated from the data acquisition systems, it forms a solid foundation for understanding, for understanding and analysis. The Lyceum ingests data from these data acquisition systems and transforms it into a clean and code-ready format. Visualiz visualizations take us to the next level where graphs, statistics, and yield uh, live, providing a clear, concise representation of that data. They act as a guiding beacon, illuminating path forward, a path forward for decision-making. But it doesn't end there. Insights emerge as a culmination of data and visualizations. Reports, collaboration, and documentation unite, empowering teams to extract meaningful and meaning and pave the way for intelligent actions. Insights emerge as a culmination of data and visualizations. And at the peak of the pyramid lies action, which is the ultimate goal. Based on the solid foundation of the prior four levels, specific product-related decisions take shape, driving progress and propelling organizations towards success. Lyceum stands as a catalyst, streamlining this entire process, and it's the tool that harmonizes the data, the visualizations of that data, insights, and the actions, uh, a comprehensive solution for organizational decision-making. Okay. So, so now let's embark on the journey of data centralization, which is a process that unravels the compl complexity of data collection, shaping the very foundation of informed decision-making. Throughout the product development lifecycle, engineers most value the engineers' most valuable time for a company is spent in the pursuit of collecting data to guide decisions mm -hmm. to, and to validate the product performance to ensure manufacturability. Then once experiment yields result, uh, once, once experiment yields, uh, I'm sorry, then once experiment yield results, they are compared uh, against upper and lower limits, which are defined by a program performance requirements. At the heart of data collection lies the design of experiment, which is a strategy, a strategic approach employed by engineers to test hypothesis and gather essential insights into product performance. This process takes place in a research laboratory or on a manufacturing line as they strive to uncover meaningful and actionable insights into the development hardware of hardware products. <clears throat> Engineer, engineers design experiments ensuring they adhere to rigorous standards. A well-designed experiment includes a set of controls and variables that are, which are variables that are carefully managed to make the results repeatable and accurate. By controlling the variables that might influence the outcome, engineers maintain the reliability and validity of the data that they collect. Mm -hmm. The Lyceum allows engineers to attach descriptions of these control variables to their data, allowing for other engineers to easily replicate results and manage and managers and directors to make decisions backed by the robust evidence. Whether in the controlled environment of a research laboratory or the dynamic realm of a manufacturing line, engineers exercise their expertise to capture valuable data that shapes their course of their product development. And data centralization is the key to harnessing the insights gained through this time-consuming process. So just- It empowers organizations to unlock the full sorry, potential. Sorry, Josh, would, would an example be like, if we have a, a development lab in Boston for a headphone company, and then they have a factory in China, and maybe the lab has a clipple system and something like this, but maybe the factory in China has a sound check on the production line. And so they've done this experiment and they, they've outlined these tolerances that they need. And then that data set will go to the, the factory in China and they utilize that, or the design of experiment goes there and they, it, there's a way to replicate it with their equipment in China. Is is this kind of yeah? The the, the, the goal is to 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 go both ways. Uh, mm -hmm. It's really not limited one way or another. Uh, most of the scenarios is going from China. Like they they want to make sure, uh, or or you can have like a a a, a, a prototype built in the United States, mm -hmm. and you uh you want to baseline that product uh, perform that performance. Uh, so it produces the same over in China. Yeah, then yeah, it, it, you could definitely replicate that um, with with all the details 
uh, being attached to the data from mm-hmm. that experiment and send it over to send it, put it on the Lyceum and then have somebody access that on the Lyceum. But mm-hmm. I'm going to get into the, those scenarios okay. in, in a bit. So, okay. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Thank you for the question. Audio uh, engineers are equipped with a, dev- a diverse range of tools to collect the data that they need. <clears throat> Once a well-designed experiment has demonstrated repeatability and accuracy, engineers utilize the data acquisition tools to replicate the experiment multiple times. With each iteration, these tools capture valuable data, offering engineers information to analyze and derive insights from. The choice of the data acquisition tool depends on several factors ranging from product application to resource pu- budgeting and even an engineer's personal preference. Mm-hmm. So at the beginning of the you know, DOE process, the design of experiment process, the equipment set up, the sequence of events undergo careful iteration. Uh, and it's like a recipe that engineers strive to create, to, which, uh, which ensures that every element aligns to produce the best results. Once the output data is reviewed and finalized, the experiment doesn't stop there. The experiment enters a new fi- phase where it is run multiple times on a variety of, of devices, and each repetition holds promise of uncovering new insight. Taking the DOE process to another level, experiments may unfold in different locations, be it the United States or China. This is exactly what we were talking about just a second <laughs> ago. Despite the geographical divide, engineers strive to ensure that these experiments remain identical, as identical as possible. And why is the synchronization crucial? It's all about validating a device's performance, given confidence, given confidence in the development teams, and in gaining invaluable insights while keeping the pace of the program's development. Engineers have their have to coordinate their experiment process across borders. They work to most of the time off standard standard hours, so. Like if it's five o'clock here, it's nine a.m. there, and then you know, it's it's nice from a company's perspective because everyone's working all all around, but teams working on the same thing in different hours is difficult to align. Um, but they they do so, and it usually takes weeks in order to uh, standardize a specific experiment. The goal is to ensure the experiments unfold in parallel, however, uh, sharing a common framework and capturing comparable comparable data points. And through this coordination, they not only validate the performance of the device, but also foster a spirit of collaboration, which collapses that time and space and leverages uh, collective expertise at the same time. There's also an instance where the same engineer needs to replicate an experiment over time. You know, it could be weeks or months or even longer uh, between each iteration. And this requires the engineer to recall previous steps, uh, set up details, uh, use the same equipment and potentially find the uh, and use the previous data and limits. This scenario could also involve two different engineers at the same organization. Uh, but for instance, if an engineer working on a product leaves a company and a new engineer needs to backfill their work, they would need to find and be able to reproduce all their all their work from the since departed engineer. The goal is to really extend the lifespan of data, right? So if if a, if an actual engineer leaves a company, the the data that they've collected at that company typically dies. Yeah, I had that problem this week. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. So now now the most difficult situation, really the holy grail of test engineering, um, which is the replication of results across time, locations, and setups. Uh, so in the realm of test engineering, a significant challenge emerges, and that is to reprodu- reproduce the results that transcend the boundaries of time, locations, and setups. And it's a mm-hmm. complex puzzle requiring meticulous attention to detail and data management. And as, as engineers strive to conquer this challenge, a trend begins to emerge, which is the realization that centralizing a standard standardized format of test data is the key to success. Mm-hmm. So centralization of, da- of data empowers engineers and their teams to uncover trends, identify patterns, and draw meaningful conclusions. It brings together disparate pieces of information, creating a cohesive and powerful repository of knowledge. Data ingestion is an essential step of harnessing the power of the Lyceum and unlocking the full potential of your development process. The journey begins by uploading all your valuable data into the Lyceum platform. Every piece of information, every data set ready to be harnessed and transformed into actionable insights. But it doesn't stop there. The Lyceum empowers you as an individual engineer, as an as an individual engineer, to customize how you di- how your distinctive data sets are read, 
ensuring that it aligns seamlessly with your unique requirements and application specific functions. It's like having a tailor in your closet, adjusting every piece of clothing that you wanna wear for every occasion. But this is for all your data across all your experiments and programs, allowing you to extract the most value from your development efforts. Okay. There are, however, significant challenges of data ingestion, a path filled with complexities that demand our attention and innovative, innovative solutions. As we embark on this journey, we encounter the first hurdle, data format, which are data format differences. Different tests, different formats is a, pu is a puzzling, uh, it's, it's a, like a puzzle waiting to be solved, demanding flexibility and adaptability when handling different diverse data sources. But the challenge doesn't end there. Security issues loom large. In internal data, a treasure trove of insights must be safeguarded and shielded from external teams and vendors. The integrity of confidentiality of your information are, are, par are, are of paramount importance. Mm -hmm. Searchability becomes our next frontier, uh, and data, once ingested, needs to be easily found again in the future. And it must also contain uh, be intelligible context and contextually understood, enabling efficient retrieval and utilization. We also need we also have the need for robust processing applications, statistical analysis such as visualization, limit generation. Uh, yield calculation, they all come into play and empower your, you to extract meaningful insights. Mm -hmm. So now we get into the tangled web of format issues, a challenge faced by many in the realm of data ingestion. When it comes to data, variety is the spice of life. Uh, data, from, and different, data from different companies, from different programs, and even t data from the same team, different data from the same teammates, within a single program can all be different. It's like navigating through a labyrinth of sheets with varying names and structures. Spreadsheets from different experiments can have different sheets with different names, various categories of data, and, con and contain minute differences that make, minute differences that make it cumbersome to post-process. And we understand the frustration of spending hours uh, cleaning and organizing data, and we strive to make sense of all that chaos. So here we encounter a scenario with repetitive x-axis data from a, for, for each measurement. Uh, while it served its purpose during acquisition, it became unnecessary during post-processing and visualization stages. You can see in, uh, in these columns here, you have uh, x-axis that are repeating that are identical. And if you were to post-process a Python script on top of this, it would, uh, it would be a little bit cumbersome um, task to have to remove all of it. And additionally, the extra uh, the data include ex extra header information, such as units and uh, as highlighted in the fourth row right here. Another example of data format challenges where the measurement uh, data is separated into rows instead of columns. This unique scenario presents its own set of complexities that demand our attention. In this representation, the structure of the data can pose obstacles, especially when it becomes uh, when it comes to efficient data handling and analysis. The traditional column-based format is often preferred for its ease of interpretation and compatibility with various tools and algorithms. But that's not all. Our example also reveals that the presence of upper and lower limits uh, information make it difficult for a code parser to handle them separately. This adds a layer of complexity when it comes to data interpretation and, and analysis. Here's yet another example of uh, data format complexity. complexity. A data set that contains a wealth of metadata. And in this intricate scenario, we encounter additional elements that demand our attention. This data format incor uh, incorporates valuable information such as pass fail uh, indicators, tester mm -hmm. station IDs, appraiser uh, details, and timestamps. While the, these meta while these metadata elements provide crucial context and insights, these can also represent challenges when it comes to streamlining uh, data processing. And here's yet another uh, one of the more extreme examples of data uh, uh, data file formats that we've come across. Mm -hmm. uh, there are an infinite number of ways that these software suites, uh, software data acquisition systems, can export data or, or produce data, uh, and and it range like it, it can range not even not even from uh, Soundcheck and and Clipple or or Aqua or uh, Soundcheck, 
but also from shop floor systems that were, were made in, in China, for example. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we basically set a golden standard format, uh, which is applied, which, which is applied, which, uh, basically, um, standardizes the format and ensures the seamless integration and compatibility within the Lyceum's backend. So in this format, the data is structured in columns with a single header row. Mm -hmm. uh, at the top of the sheet, there's potentially multiple sheets that uh, that also have this format and uh, and, you know, one common access column. It can be here or, you know, in any other column, but it has to have it has to all be column based. Mm -hmm. By adhering to this golden standard, uh, we unlock a world of possibilities. The Lyceum empowers us to unleash the full potential where it could be also um, easily used and transferable to other platforms like MATLAB, Python, and, and Excel to, to be post-processed. Mm -hmm. At the Lyceum, we take pride in transforming your data, unleashing its true potential. Through our powerful features and capabilities, we revolutionize the data management experiment, experience. One of the ways we accomplish this is by accepting a variety of formats, and which we understand comes, which, you know, because we understand data comes in different shapes and sizes, and we embrace and we embrace this diversity. Whether it's CSV, Excel, TXT, dot, dat, dot mat, or other commonly used formats, the Lyceum seamlessly integrates with your data, ensuring smooth, hassle-free uploads. But so, we don't stop so there. We need Josh, you to attack. Josh, just, oh, just yeah. a quick question. So, so basically, so the 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 end customer, if they're exporting from MATLAB or something, Lyceum is doing the job of mapping what those those datas are and putting them into your standardized format. That's kind of the the ease of use. So the the user would select, okay, this came out of Soundcheck or this came out of this. And then you could map it into this standardized format. That's like one of the real gems yeah, here. There's a okay. th there's a there's an extra step uh, that, that that is required, but we do do the uh, transcribing from dot uh, mat file to mm -hmm. uh, to I guess spreadsheet format. So then you can go in and and, and what we call configure the actual uh, data data file, mm -hmm. and we can get into that in the demo. Sure. Okay. So, uh, um, so in order to deliver all these features, uh, the backend architecture requires a significant amount of investment into its architecture. Our backend has been tailored over the course of the past three years to focus on three critical components, which one is fast performance anywhere in the world via the web browser. Two, a database separation, allowing users to separate data files in organized groups, as well as separate tra and track limits and metadata from data files. And three is security so that your organization or company's sensitive data is secured and not accessible only, only to uh, the users with appropriate clearance. All right. So let's, uh, let's get into this demo real fast. So here we have the, the front page, the homepage of the Lyceum where you, you'll log in, you'll see what groups you're a, a part of, as well as your data set that you can search through. <laughs> Um, right now we're going to talk about data ingestion and in order to ingest data, you have to, you have to come into the data ingester tab and choose your file from your computer to be ingested. You give it a name or to name this Lyceum demo to THD podcast. Then we're going to give it some descriptors of, so we can easily find this in the future. Uh, so we'll give this program name a demo, for example, we'll give this. Uh, stage example DVT or DVT one or whatever it is that you want. You can actually put Jira tickets. You can create new ones if you want. Like, I'm just going to put environment like manufacturing line. And then if you want to, you can add a tag so you can easily find it in the future if you want to leave a little note for yourself. So I could put just Dave there. And if I search Dave in the future, it'll find this data set. <laughs> All right, so this is where you uh, so you choose the group privileges. So anyone in these groups will be have will have access to this uh, data and no one else. And here's where you come in and, and you clean your data. So you have the uh, you have a workbook here with five different sheets, mm -hmm. and you've got uh, 
the first sheet is in this golden standard format that we talked about before. Okay. We, we have a common access column in, in the first column, and then you have your devices under test performance in the following five. So this is good to go. This doesn't need any cleaning. Uh, for your next, for the next page, uh, we have basically all the uh, different serial numbers in rows instead of columns, and we have these upper and lower limits as a part of the data set. <clears throat> so in order to clean this data, we have to make sure that these are all in the in columns and not rows. So basically, we have a button here that just transforms everything by hitting the transpose button, and now everything is in that golden standard format. Hmm. The next page, we have uh, a, an output of data where you have repeating um, columns of x axis data. So you can see right here in these highlighted columns that all this all this data is all repeated, repetitive, and not necessary. So I'm just going to highlight those and then delete them. As the also the first three columns, we don't really need data, that data set either. So I'm just going to delete those as well. And now it's in that golden standard format. Sometimes you'll have data that'll have both one one dimensional what we call what AP calls meter data and uh, chart data, or one dimension. We call it one dimensional data versus two dimensional data. Mm -hmm. uh, and you want to basically separate these uh, into separate pages. So, for instance, for in this scenario, what we'll do is we'll take these this data set and we're just going to move it to the page we have one dimensional data right here as well. So that just took that everything and, and put it into this page, which already has the same one dimensional data as well. And then we come in here and we do what we did on the on the other repeating uh, X axis column um, page as well. Just remove this data, delete it, and then remove this as well. Cool. And then finally, we've got the one dimensional uh, meter data where we have uh, 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 just this column that doesn't um, mean anything to us. We don't really care about this one either for this all intents and purposes or this one or these two, which are just titles. This is repetitive data. Mm -hmm. Remove that. And we have this header file, which is not the first uh, column in a uh, uh, first row in a spreadsheet. It's the second row. So what we do is we have to just switch it with the top header row. And that gives it all its appropriate uh, titles, and then just remove that. Hmm. And the last step is that we just have all these empty cells here that we just got to get rid of. So we're just going to select that, scroll all the way down, select shift and click, and then delete all that. And now we got everything clean. We can also rename, um, you know, rename columns if we want. That's just an example, if, if, if that's what somebody want, wanted to do. Sure. Yep. Cool. All right. So uh, so now we've got everything like cleaned up and uh, every, everyone can uh, kind of see the, the benefit of a data file in this format. Um, in order to post-process and, and kind of utilize the data effectively on the Lyceum, we have to actually configure it for the Lyceum. So what we do is we have to come over to the configured configure uh, tab, and uh, here's where we add either measurements or limits. So for this first page, we're just going to add a measurement because this is a me measurement and not a limit. Uh, we're going to select two two dimension. It defaults to two dimensional data because audio data you you typically have X Y you know frequency response uh, data, and uh, here's where you select what your primary column is hit done and what your units are. So I'm going to select Hertz for uh, X axis and DB for your Y axis. And we're done with configuring this page. Okay. So when you go to the next page, we can do the same thing, except we have these two columns that are upper and lower limits. So here's where I'm going to add my measurement. I select the first column. And then instead of, uh, having the rest of the page be considered a measurement, I'm going to deselect the rest clip here and only select the columns that I want to be part of the measurement. So that basically removes the upper and lower limits from the actual measurement file, measurement, uh, I guess, data set. Mm -hmm. And then we just select our measure our units here too. 
then I can come in and I can select that those measurement those limits. So basically, I select uh, the primary column again, and then the upper and lower limit. I give it a name, uh, THD pod limit. And then it's uh, it's units. Mm -hmm. Great, so this page is uh, all good and done and configured. Uh, here, I'm just gonna configure just like I, I normally did on the first page. Okay, that's good to go. And then the same thing goes for this page. And then for one dimensional data, I just select one dimensional data and I select my primary column and my unit. And we're good to go. Once, uh, once everything's configured, you can hit upload. Mm -hmm. Uh, just a right curious, here just a curious question because we deal with this in China all the time. Mm -hmm. Have you have you looked forward as to avoiding any kind of Google blockages with the Great Firewall? Is this this is all based on like a hosting service that everybody can share across the border to China? Yeah, so this is browser browser based. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we 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 have. Uh, um, someone that's used it in China and it's, it hasn't had an issue at the, at the moment. We don't use Google uh, as okay. a deployment uh, yeah. structure, uh, backend architecture. Yeah. Okay. Good, good plan. So, ask, yeah. Simon, ask Simon about that issue. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we grab a beer after that, after this, and uh, <laughs> we talk about more stories. I would love that. Um. So yeah, uh, so basically we we see here, uh, you know, this filters out as the most recent um, mm -hmm. uh, data file that was uploaded. But if if it wasn't, for example, and you wanted to find it again, let's just say I type in Dave. Yeah. Uh, we it it pops up. Oh, I have other ones that oh, I was practicing earlier with Dave before. So <laughs> <laughs> it'll po populate everything that has a descriptor named Dave, or if right. I want to do manufacturing line. Right. There you go. Cool. Um, yeah, cool. So the the real benefit, like you can come in and and see the data uh, very quickly, but um, also you can do other things. Like if you were to go expand this, you could download the files uh, in the uh, clean format, which uh, it was the, the the format after which we we cleaned everything into columns, or if we wanted to download the original file. This would be beneficial, like let's say if you have a complex uh, uh, Excel sheet, for example, with uh, a bunch of formulas in it, uh, you don't want to screw up and you don't want to lose that information. You yeah. can basically host your your file on the Lyceum, um, clean it up, uh, or you don't even have to clean it up. You can just upload it and attach descriptors and then download that file again if you want to. It's just a, a good way of librarying your, your data as well. Mm -hmm. So we really give as much flexibility to the uh, engineers as they want. But um, if they wanted to uh, configure everything so they can uh, post-process in the Lyceum, they could, uh, I don't know if you guys have used Soundcheck before, but it's somewhat like the memory list where you come in and you select your data and it'll populate into a, a what we call the pin board over here. Uh, let's say I, I have this measurement and then I also want to pin my limit that we created up into the pin board. If I hit post process, I can add a actual graph with this data. Oh, I have to change the scale here. Oh, one extra zero, too many. And then uh, if I wanted to add the limits, I could just load the limits and you can see them right there. Mm -hmm. Then you can calculate statistics and yield in, in the future, but we can get to that in a, in a future podcast. One of the sure. uh, one of the th best time saving functions of the Lyceum is if you wanted to uh, do that for the first, let's say, uh, uh, PD fit check run or the mini build, uh, um, where you have a bunch of data at the beginning of a build, and you want to apply the same 
um, I guess, cleaning steps to the every subsequent day of a build, you can uh, basically choose a file again and give it a new name, like day two of production, for example. And uh, you basically use the template file. Now, what the template file is, is a uh, it's, it remembers every single step that we took in order to attach descriptors, uh, attach priv uh, security privileges, and all the cleaning uh, steps we just ran through. And mm -hmm. it has it all in this one file that you you, you just use, you reference. So I just put Lyceum, uh, which is, so, so it remembers that uh, project name as the uh, template file. And basically all, this, all of the steps that I took, all the descriptors I took, it just rem remembers everything. And I can just quickly hit upload. So I don't have to go through that whole process again. And then the next step that we're about, to, we're really excited about, and we're going to release in the next upcoming few weeks is uh, multiple file uploads at once. So if you have um, a ton of different files, uh, that you have and you want to upload them all at once, you basically can use a template file that uh, will append every single data set, data file to one file itself. So you can uh, not only uh, uh, download it or store it and, and search for it on the Lyceum, but also configure it and post process and do use the post processing applications of the Lyceum. Hmm. So that's really exciting. We're really excited about that. Very good. So yeah, um, to round it out, uh, right now we want to just mention that the data cleaning ingestion tool is free as of today. Um, mm -hmm. Some use cases we, we've we've mentioned, but like uh, some some I'm sorry, let me rewind. Some use cases for the data ingest ingester that might be beneficial are you know you transforming a complex data set so you can you know use Python a Python script on it. Or two, you can organize different data files into the same format, and then in the future, in the future search and download uh, of the measurements and limits, you know, in, you can download them in a cleaned form format to run internal or custom, you know, applications on top of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then, like up next, we're just trying to build on top of the data. Uh, post-processing applications that we've already developed into the Lyceum, such as the, the graphing that you saw and basic statistic and yield um, that, that we have already. Uh, and going forward, we're looking for four beta customers to scale uh, a data application specific to their needs for, of their program. So um, we just wanted to throw this out there because it will come at a, a generous discount of the service and include our 24-7 uh, team's support. So. Okay. Yeah, uh, we're we're excited where this is heading. We really see a um, a, a bright uh, uh, future for for this. So with that, you know, we don't we don't have to take questions. If you don't have any because I assume Ooh. I describe myself perfectly. But <laughs> <laughs> Simon, what do you think? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> uh, how do you handle uh, the uh, different uh, file formats from various vendors? Uh, you uh, uh, people uh, should save their data as a text-based format, as an ASCII format. Yeah, so uh, there are various formats like .dat and .mat that uh, I'm not sure what the technical term of what form they come in, um, but it can be parsed. We have a parser, uh, so like okay, uh, uh, we we can parse it so it it comes up like a spreadsheet in the uh, in the data cleaner. So then you can go in and configure and, and, and move things around. So it it, it uh, kind of transforms into the data, into the format that our backend accepts. Okay, so it's just Basically, a question yeah. of uh, uh, file type reading of various formats. I'm sorry? It's just a question of uh, uh, reading uh, various file type formats, binary right, formats. Right. So we're, we're limited to the number of, uh, of I guess, uh, formats that we've been exposed to, <laughs> yeah. but anything's yeah. possible. So if we have a customer that has a specific, like let's say an old uh, Melissa file from the 1990s, uh, for example, yeah. Yeah. We, 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 we know we can parse that data and then okay. have it populate. Hmm. All right. Anything else, Simon? I think it's- uh... Uh, I think we're pretty good. We're going a little bit long, so maybe- yeah. Quite a... oh, Sorry about that. <laughs> no, no, that's that's fine. That's fine. Uh, no, yeah. So, 
Yeah, yeah. Josh and Chris, thanks for coming on and introducing this technology. I, I, I see it like, especially like my instance more recently was we had a, a microcontroller programmed for an LED effect on a speaker and that engineer left the company. And so not directly related because it wasn't data collection, but the 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 firmware was was lost. And so this 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 kind of issue about managing your data is a is is a massive issue and especially with people leaving and and such like that that's uh, becomes a nightmare to manage uh, whoever takes over but uh, so yeah um, appreciate appreciate your time today and uh, anybody has questions just jot them down below and of course like subscribe and share and all that good stuff and so we'll see everybody on the next episode thank you so much guys okay thank you see ya